Okay, this is 8, 6, 8, 7, and 8, 8, all in one section. Um, the first question deals with the price of a home or a home purchase. Um, there are a lot of parts to this. So it's important that we follow along and are able to work through each of these parts. So when you purchase a home, the very first thing uh, that you're going to need to have is a down payment. Okay? And so part one to every problem, or part A in this case, is your down payment. We're going to abbreviate that DP. All right? Um, your down payment is going to always be a percentage of the purchase price. Okay, so your down payment on your home is always going to be a percentage of the purchase price. So in this case, they're asking for a 20% down payment. And so in order to figure out your down payment, you take your purchase price and multiply it by the percentage. So we're gonna call, we'll just say purchase price times your percent. Now that percent's not your rate, is it? It's not your interest rate. It's the percent that they state for the down payment. So pay very, very close attention to that. So in this case, our problem, our down payment is gonna be our purchase price, which is? Good, $197,000 times 0.2, good. And so, I'll just say equals in this case. I should probably say equals here. And so our down payment is? $39,400. There it is. And so that's the answer to part one. In order to purchase this home, you must have $39,400 to even start talking about buying it. You don't have $39,400 in cash right there, well, in general right there. You can't purchase this house, okay? So next step. Find the amount of the mortgage. Mortgage, this term mortgage, is just a fancy way of saying a home loan. It's, just a, it's a synonym or a synonymous with home loan. So we hear about a car loan, we hear about other types of loans, and they're typically just set, stated as a loan. Whereas with a home, you just call it a mortgage. You can say your home loan's your home loan, but you can also call it a mortgage. They're the same thing, okay? so. Your mortgage, also known as your loan amount, right? Your home loan amount, that's going to be whatever your purchase price is minus your down payment. Think about it. If you make a deal that you're going to purchase a home for $197,000 and you put up front right away, 39,400 or 20% of that as your down payment, you're not taking out a loan for 197,000, are you? You're taking out a loan for less. You're taking out a loan for whatever the purchase price is minus whatever you put down right away because you already paid that part off on the home. Does that make sense, everybody? Okay, what's that amount for your mortgage? 157,600. Okay, good. So that's the amount that you're going to finance. That's the amount you're going to borrow. That's the amount that you're going to take out as a loan. Does that make sense, everybody? Okay, very, very important you understand that. The price of your home is not the amount that you're going to get a loan for. Usually you can't go and just put nothing down and purchase a home. You see some cases, even signs on the side of the road that say zero down. That's rare and there's probably other things attached to it. Usually you have to put a down payment and then whatever the leftover is, the remaining amount is how much your mortgage or your loan amount is. Any questions about that at all? Okay, so 157,600. And I am gonna type this in, that way you guys can see that um, we're working through this problem and we're getting things right in terms of the numbers. Okay, so next thing is this concept of three points at closing. Points. So what's this concept of points? Uh, so when you purchase a home, uh, there are people that help, not help, or get paid 
to process your home loan or work with you to complete your home purchase. They don't work for free, okay? It costs money to process a home purchase. Their charge or their fee are known as points. These points are really just another way of saying percentage points, meaning that they are going to charge you, in this case, 3% of whatever your loan amount is as their fee. Does that make sense? So when they say, how much must be paid for three points at closing? Closing basically means when you actually close the deal out. You close the deal, you pay, in this case, 3% to the people helping you close the deal or working to close the deal for you. Does that make sense? So, $28. Excellent, thank you. You'll have to remind me that in a moment. So your points are your mortgage, whatever your mortgage amount is, times how many? Your, oh, I don't know what you want to call it, your quantity of points. Do you want to look at it that way? Whatever, right? But it's going to be a percentage, right? So in this case, it's 157,600 times what? Point? If there are percentages, it's what? Zero, three. Good job. So in this case, we have, because we have three points, three points equals 3%. That's the key to remember here. Does that make sense? That's how I get 0 .03. So if they say two points, they're charging you 2%. If it's one point, 1%. Now just as a quick note, this is negotiable. This is negotiable in a real purchase. You can potentially even get zero points. That means they don't charge you at all. But of course they make money another way, which we'll see in a moment. Does that make sense, everybody? Okay. So. Um, after you do that, what is the amount that we have to pay? Forty-seven twenty-eight. Perfect. Okay. And they say round to the nearest dollar. Is that rounded to the nearest dollar? That is. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. There it is. Excellent. All right. Any questions about this so far? You aren't taking out a loan for this. You need to pay that on the spot. In this case. Um, that they're looking at. Sometimes you can roll this into your mortgage, okay, and pay that as part of your, your loan. So, but in this case, that's just a fee. Does that make sense, guys? It's a fee that needs to be paid right now in the context of this problem. So, just as a wrap-up summary up to this point, we have a down payment that's always required, usually, I won't say always, but usually, then, your mortgage amount or the amount that you're borrowing to pay for this home is whatever the purchase price is minus whatever you put down. That amount is going to be assessed at some percentage to determine the fee for closing out the deal for your home. Okay? Now, we always want to know how much is our monthly payment to be able to afford this home. So, once you do all of this, we can then determine what our monthly payment will be for the purchase of this home, okay? And so that's where this formula comes into play. This is part D in our problem right here. Our payment, PMT, okay, is going to be a factor of P, R over N, one minus one plus R over N to the negative NT. We're gonna do this together in a moment. Let's go fill in the pieces. They look very similar. And they are. P is going to be the amount of your mortgage. So this right here is going to end up being your P. Does that make sense, everybody? That's the amount you're borrowing, okay? So that's 157,600. Uh, Does that make sense, everybody? Okay, times R over N. Well, now we gotta come back to the problem. We have a, what, 30-year fixed rate, meaning that the interest rate does not change. It stays the same for 30 years, 8.5%. So what is our R? 0 0.05. Now, with, they don't say it, but with a home loan, it's always monthly payments. Always. Well, take that back. Almost always. Okay. A common loan, typical loan, conventional loan is monthly. So just 
keep that in mind. <laughs> Even though they don't say it. Okay, so then 1 minus 1 plus, again, r over n, 0 0.085 over 12, to the negative n t. Negative n, 12. What's our t here? 30. 30 years. And there's the setup. Does that make sense, everybody? Okay. How did we find the n? The n is implied because when you purchase a home, your payments are monthly. How do we figure out our interest rate? There it is, 8.5%, 0 0.085 converted as a decimal. How do we figure out our time? Right here, it's a 30-year fixed rate loan. Okay, and so, and then the final piece was our principal or the principal that needs to be paid off, and that is the amount that you take out from your mortgage. Be careful, what's an easy mistake to make? Using that, it's not correct. Okay, you already paid off some of that home. All right, so let's go figure out what we need to do to go and answer this. So the first thing is you probably need to figure out 0 0.085 divided by 12, and then you need to figure out that times 157,600. Does somebody have an amount for what 0 0.085 divided by 12 is? Can you just state that out loud? I'm not gonna write it down. 0.007083333. Uh, Perfect, hold that in your calculator, hit the multiplication sign. 157,600. Let's give that amount. 1,116.3333281. Perfect. Okay. We all in agreement? Okay. Good. Now, there's your numerator done. Let's go through the pieces for the denominator. You're going to need to do this part first, 0 0.085 divided by 12. Then add 1 to it. Okay. So why don't we do that first? What is 0 0.085 divided by 12 plus 1? One? 1 point something. 0, 0, 0, 0.07083333. Okay. So is it 0, 0, 007? Two zeros? Yeah. Okay. 0, 0, 0.07083333. 0, is that right? There's five things. Okay. It probably just keeps on going, right? All right. So to the negative 360. I did that one in my head, and I think you guys could do that as well, or at least do it off to the side, okay? So in this step, if you're writing out all your steps, this is what you could be doing. Now, if you have a graphing calculator and you know how to use your parentheses properly, you can put all this in in one step and get it right, but most people don't, so I am doing it this way. Now, the next thing that has to be done is we need to figure out 1.00 blah 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 to the negative 360 power. That is really, really important to handle right now. So let me write some stuff up here. I'm going to rewrite the numerator. Um, I'm going to rewrite the denominator, okay, which is just the 1 minus. Now, how do you do that? You need to do this, the power and then you should hit 360, and then there's usually a parentheses with a minus sign in it. That'll make it negative, okay? Um, and so, does somebody have a value for that that we can check? Somebody? I would do it, but my calculator's recording, Wait, so yes. how are we supposed to do the negative? This, you hit your, either your Y to the X button or your but you either hit your Y to the X button or the button that looks like this, then 360, then find a button that looks like that. And that'll make 360 negative, and then hit your equal sign. I definitely don't see that. I have a X to the negative one. Mm, no, that's not gonna be it. Let's take a look. So you have your, there's your power, there it is, right down there. Oh my God. So you have, so yours, yours is actually, you have the, almost like the best kind of calculator to do this. So yeah, you just do this button, then your, and then you actually might do that instead of doing it beforehand or doing it after you do it beforehand. So there you go. Anybody, does somebody have a value for me? Somebody have a number? Uh, I got 
So that seems right, we'll see in a moment. Um, and so from here, you need to do one minus that. You can't do that minus one, but if you do your value here, minus one, you just need to make sure you take this minus sign off of it. But if you wanna type it back in, that's fine. Regardless, we need to figure out what this is. And so that's 1116.3333281. And the reason why I'm writing so many decimal points is because we want to avoid rounding until we get to the very end. Okay, what is that? Point 0.9 something, right? Point 0.921213342. 3306? Yes, sir. Okay, that's good. All right, now we've got that. The last thing we need to do is divide. Numerator divided by that. Don't take that and get the division sign by the numerator. Numerator divided by that. Got an answer? Maybe in the 600, 700 range? It's just my guess. No, that that's that's no, that's good. Okay. I just uh, I was not thinking right. Maybe one thousand two hundred and twelve because it's staying Yeah. So okay. let's do one thousand two hundred eleven. Um, and eighty one. Now it says round to the nearest dollar, right? So let's go one two one two and see what see which one they take. Whether because yesterday when I did it with my other class, it wasn't really doing it. It didn't like that 12 for some reason, even though it makes sense. We let's, round up, right? It should round up. So let's take a look. And it's good. Okay? So this is it. Even and, if it's below five, right? Yes, usually. Because if you're making payments, you don't want to be short, right? Mm -hmm. So if this was 1211.2 even, or one even, if you were even short by 10 cents every month, for 30 years, you would actually not pay this off. Does that make sense? Plus the interest on that. Okay, so there it is. That would be your monthly payment. This is a complete problem. Now you can see why it's quite lengthy. Okay, very, very lengthy, but there's all your parts. And then we're not done yet. There's still a little bit more. Okay, so now it says, find the total cost of interest over 30 years. Well. That's easy. That one's not bad because we've done it before. How do we figure out how much we paid in interest over 30 years? Uh, take the monthly payment, times it by your term. Yes. And then minus the initial. You got it. Okay, let's go do that. So I'm going to put part E right here. Okay, so here is part E right here, which is to find our interest. So we need to find our total amount paid in interest. Well, the total amount paid in interest is all of your payments, right? The total amount that you paid. So total paid minus your mortgage amount. 436320 Okay, so let me do this before we actually put that in. How do we figure out the total paid? I'm going to just re refresh it. Total paid is... Every payment times 360. Why 360? 12 payments a year, 30 years. Does that make sense? So your total pay is always your payment times your N times your time. Is it, doesn't that make sense? How much did you pay every month? How many months a year? How many years? Okay, so in this case, we take 12, 12, 12, 1,212 times 12 payments a year times 30 years, and that's how we get what? One more time. Oh, the interest. No, 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 no. Oh, total, total pay, pay which is what? Uh, 436,320. 320, good. 
436,320. Is that the interest? No. No, it's the total that you paid over the course of 30 years out of your money here. Does that make sense? Then we subtract the mortgage from it, 157,600. Because what is 157,600? It's how much you borrowed originally. But nobody lends you money for free. That's the point of this. The difference here is how much it costs you to borrow to pay for that home. Okay? And what is that? 278,720. 720. 720. Almost 150% of the original. Yeah. Can yes. Can you explain what the N is again? Is that total paid? No, 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 no. N is what? What has N always been? What has N always been? Months. Exactly. Exactly. Well, Let's back up just a if it's a, well, it's N is your number of con how many how many payments. payments you make per year. In so our previous some, context, yeah, some uh, some mortgages allow you to do quarterly. Some mortgages allow you to do yearly. But common is monthly, and that's why that's why we said that from the start is it's monthly, monthly, monthly. That's where the twelve comes from. Twelve, twelve, twelve. Everything so, is negotiable. Many times, yes. So there it is. That is a very complete problem. Is it still recording? Yeah. Awesome, thank you. So there is a very complete problem. That's how to do it. Takes quite a while. Gotta be very, very good at it, okay? So there it is. I'm not gonna do every single one in here, um, but I do wanna talk about each one so you can see the connection to everything we did, okay? So let's just talk about this one. It says the price of a small cabin is $80,000. The bank requires a 5% down payment. That seems similar to what we did. There's your purchase price, isn't it? There's your down payment. The buyer is offered two mortgage options. So, I'm not doing this problem, but I do want to show you the setup for it. There's your purchase price of 80,000. You need to make, or I'll say PP, you need to make a down payment of how much? 5%. But then, after you have this all wrapped up, you really actually have two choices. You can either do a 20 year at 8% or you can do a 30 year at 8%. Okay, is that right? 20 year 8% or 30 year at 8%? Okay. Calculate the amount of interest paid for each option. So in other words, what do you have to do? Literally, everything through there except for which step? Which step do we not have to do? Which one? Which one is not required? The points, exactly. For this problem, you don't need to do the points, right? But you need to figure out how much the down payment is. You need to figure out how much the mortgage is. You need to figure out each payment for those two options, then you need to calculate the interest for each of those two options. So you're making a comparison between those two and essentially doing everything we did here for two and then just comparing them. Now notice, they walk you through it. This first one says find the monthly payment for the 20 year option. So you would just go figure that out, right? But you would first need to know what's my down payment amount and what's my actual mortgage, right? Because you wouldn't want to use 80,000 as your principal. You need to use 80,000 minus 5% as your principal. So that's why you have to do steps A and B. So okay? when we're talking about buying a home, will this always be our formula? The always. P &P equals always. always, unless you're talking about a non-fixed. More yeah, we aren't doing we aren't doing an arm. So, arm is an adjustable rate mortgage. That's not you're not going to see any adjustable rate mortgages in this section at all. It's all fixed rate. Yeah. Does that make sense, everybody? Okay. So I'm not going to go and do that. That would take us another 20, 30 minutes just to do that when you have a very good example there. Okay. All right. Let's take a look at this one. So this problem says your credit card has a balance of forty-eight hundred dollars and an annual interest rate of 18%. You decide to pay off the balance over two years. If there are no further purchases charged to the card, how much must you pay each month? Is this just another one of these? 
Yes, let's talk about this, okay? So, it says your credit card has a balance of 4,800. What's 4,800 in the context of our problem here? What would it be? Uh, the initial. Um... It'd be your, what variable? <laughs> It'd be your P, exactly. That's the amount you have to pay off. Just like in a home loan, that's the amount we have to pay off. So this payment formula right here, it works for this problem as well. Annual interest rate of 18%. What does this represent? What variable? Your rate, your R, exactly. You decide to pay off the balance over two years. What's that? Time. That's your time. So do we have enough information to calculate our monthly payment? We sure do, don't we? Let's go actually set this up. And let's just go do it so that we can work with this formula again. So our payment's gonna be, we have $4,800 to pay off, times our rate, 18%, over our, over our N. Now, we're gonna pay it off what? Every month, month right? You gotta look for the key word. They might say every quarter, every six months, whatever. So in this case, it is what here? 12, 12. good job. All no, over? 24 because it's two years, wasn't it? No, because it's always done yearly. Oh. So this T of two years gets factored in. You wouldn't want to do this. See that? It factors that in. It'll uh, then yeah. calculate your total number of payments, right? So then one minus, one plus, again, 0.18 over 12, R over N, to the negative NT. Negative N, 12, T, there's your two. And that's how the calculation of 24 months comes out. Does that make sense? Yeah. It, it is built into that. You won't miss it so long as you multiply by the correct years. There's your setup. Does this look similar to what we just did over here? Yes. Yeah, totally. No problem at all. So let's go calculate it. You're going to need to first do 0.18 divided by 12 and then multiply that by 4,800. Somebody have an answer for that? 72. Just 72. Great. Okay. Then the denominator. We have 1 minus 0.18 divided by 12 plus 1. What's that? Uh, 1.015. That's it? Great. To the negative 24 power. Everybody agree? Okay. Now, we need to do 1.015 to the negative 24 power. What is that? 0.69954392. Is there three nines in there? Or just two? Two, I'm sorry, that was... Three, nine, two, he said. Sorry, uh, so there's, is it... There's two nines okay. in the first part. Okay, I thought I added one extra. So, point six nine nine five four three nine two. does that sound right? Okay. All right, wonderful. Then, we need to do one minus that, which would be point three something, right? Point three zero zero four five six zero eight. Okay, good. And then, to actually know our payment amount, we do 72 divided by that, which is what? 239. What's the cents on it? 64 cents. 64 cents. Let's see what they ask for here. Round to the nearest dollar. So we're going to need to pay off every month 240. That looks like it's what they want, 240. Okay. Is this still recording? Yes. Excellent. Thank you. Hey, that's pretty good angle there. You can still <laughs> see that. Okay. Um, so there it is. Perfect. We must pay $240 every month for two years to pay off this credit card. Does that make sense? Okay. But that's not it, right? We need to figure out the, the amount of interest because they aren't loaning that to you for free, are they? They're charging you 18% annually, okay? So how do we figure out the amount of interest? Let's come back over here. Doesn't this look familiar, right? We figure out the interest by finding out how much we paid in total minus the original amount that we had to pay off in this case. This, this right here applies to this problem as well. The amount of interest we pay is just like the mortgage scenario, which is the total amount we paid minus the original that needed to be paid off. Does that make sense, guys? 
How do we figure out the total amount we paid? 240 times 24. 240 times 24 or 240 times 12 times two. You paid $240 every month for two years. And so that's how we figured that out. 240 times 12 times two or 240 times 24. What is that? 5760. 5760. What's the original amount that we had to pay off? 4800. So how much did we have to pay in interest so that um, over the course of these two years that we had paid off? 560. Exactly. So that's how much we paid in interest because we could not afford to pay off the credit card right away. That's kind of, in my opinion, it's sort of a steep price to pay. It's a lot of money, a grand, okay? Lesson learned, don't get any credit card debt. And there it is. Does that make sense, everybody? Okay? You're still gonna get into it, but try and keep it manual. <laughs> yeah. There, there, there's, in this day and age, there's no way not to get a credit card and get into debt. <laughs> Mm, I'm not in debt. It can I be am. done. It can be done. It can be done. It can be done. But like I got twenty five. I got twenty five grand worth of it right now. Oh my gosh, that sounds terrible. <laughs> All right. Um, still recording. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. This problem number four. Oh. I always like to do this problem using the help me solve this because it walks it through much nicer than I do. So we're gonna use the help me solve this to answer number four, okay? What is number four? It says, the credit card with the transaction described on the right uses the average daily balance method to calculate interest. The monthly interest rate is one and a half percent of the average daily balance. Calculate parts A through D using the statement on the right. This is just a little, snapshot of a credit card statement. Obviously, this is a very simple credit card statement. This person didn't do too much, right? But um, what this is gonna show you how to do, do is um, calculate how much you pay in interest, how much your payments are for a given credit card month or billing cycle on your credit card. So um, let's just look at this as an overview, then we'll jump into the help me solve this so that you can see how problem four is done. So what happened here is it says previous balance 6,230. That means this person did not pay off $6,230 from whatever previous months of using their credit card, his or her credit card. That means that when we roll into March here, in this case, when we roll into March, this person is holding over a little over $6,000 in debt. Does that make sense? This person has a little over $6,000 in credit card debt. And then, as March goes on, they are adding and subtracting from it based on their purchases, okay? <laughs> Thank you. So, on March 1st, on March 1st is when the person is billed. The person does not make a payment until March 5th and only pays how much? $250. Out of this, that's crazy. On March 7th, the person eats out for $50. On March 12th, the person gets groceries, $70. On March 21st, the person gets car repairs for $280. And on March 31st, it ends. So what we need to find out is the average daily balance. How do we do that? Let's go to help me solve this, okay? So let's take a look here. Um, so the average daily balance is the sum of the unpaid balances for each day in a billing period divided by the number of days. That sounds complicated. We're going to break it down and go one step at a time. So your first step in your problem is to determine how much the balance was at each step or major stage in the month. What do we mean by that? Okay, let's understand. On March 1st, there was an unpaid balance of 6,230. Does that make sense? When we walked into March, that was the amount that was not paid off or carried over from the previous month. Nothing happened between March 1st and March 5th. Everybody agree? But on March 5th, what happened? They made a payment. The person made a payment of $250. <laughs> now, are we adding to the 6,230 or subtracting? Subtracting. 
income. Subtracting, because the person made a payment, we are subtracting from the 6,230. What is our amount there? 5,980. 5,980. So on March 5th, the person only owes 5,980. Does that make sense, everybody? Okay. Now, nothing happened on March 6th, but on March 7th, what happened? The person spent $50, which means the person added to that. Does that make sense, guys? What is the balance on March 7th? 6,030. Okay. So wait, how did we get that one? The person spent $50, right? Okay, so you add 50 to so that. So you add 50 to that. Now on March 12th, what happened? What happened on March 12th? Spent 70 on groceries. Are we adding or subtracting to that? Adding. We're adding. What's the balance as of March 12th? 6,100. 6, Good. Now, March 21st, the last transaction of the month for this person, did they spend or credit? Did they spend or pay off? They spent how much? 280. So we're at what? 6380? Yeah. And there we are. We're correct. So your first step, when you're taking your notes here, your first step is to find the balances at all the critical dates in the month. Does that make sense? whether you add or subtract. So that's your first step, is to find the balance at each stage of the month. Does that make sense? Okay, any questions about that at all? So you need to be, oh, you need to be creating a table as you go through this. Okay, what was your question? On our homework that I printed out, it's like A, B, C, D, and you have to find like the future we're doing all that in steps right now. You haven't even, we haven't even finished A yet. Okay. We're doing A right now. Okay. okay, so March 1st, notice what we just did and filled in this table. We're doing part A, we're trying to find the average daily balance right now. That's the step. We haven't really done anything so far. This is just step two coming up. So step two, what is that? You need to find out how many days the account sat at each of these balances. Let's give you an example. What do we mean by that? So from March 5th to March 7th, the account was at 5,980. That's why it's two. Does that make sense? So for two days, the account sat at 5980, which means from March 1st to March 5th, how many days would that be? Four. Four. Okay, so from March 1st to March 5th, the account sat for four days at 62.30. From March 5th to March 7th, after they paid 250, the account sat for two days. Now, how long did the account sit at 6,030? Five. Five. Five days. Oops. Now, how long did the account sit at 6,100? Nine. Nine, because 21 minus 12, it sat from March 12th to March 21st, nine days now when did the billing cycle end ten. on the 31st so this no, normally you would think 10 but it's actually 11 think about it because you need to add one more day for because 21 22 23 24 25 26 27 28 29 30 31 okay. always your very last one you need to add one extra day on it okay does that make sense okay so um, there it is, and that's correct. We're still answering part A right now, okay? All right, is it really that hard? No, but we are uh, needing to go through all these steps. Now, you add another row to your column. So we figured out our unpaid balances. That was step one. We figured out the number of days. That was step two. Now we find the product of them. You multiply how, how much we had times the number of days that it sat at for each of these values, okay? They filled in three of them for you. You need to do two of them. So can somebody tell me what the uh, number is for March 5th? 11,960. That sounds good. And then March 12th, 549. Is that right? Okay. Wait, how so, did you, I'm sorry. How did you get those numbers? You multiply. 
Unpaid balance times the number of days. Okay, so the third step was multiplying unpaid balance by number of days. They filled in a few of these for you. This is why I like to do it here because it, it builds my table along. And so you yourself can do that. It's a lot easier to do it here than to put all this giant table on a board. Okay? All right. So, and of course, if you go through Help Me Solve This for your problem, it'll walk you through the same steps as a reinforcement. Okay? But I'm showing you now. Now, once you've found the product of those, which we just did in the third step, you add all these numbers up. All right, so go add all these numbers up and somebody give me the answer for that. So we're going to add all of these up, add all of those up. Is it still recording? Yes. Perfect, thank you. Looks good, nice job, there it is. So you add all those up there, step four. It's a very long process, problem number four. Um, sometimes some students just skip it all together on the test, but I don't recommend that. Now, um, so once you have that value, remember you just got 192,110. To find your average daily balance, part A of your problem, you take that and divide it by the number of days in your billing period. And how many days did we have in our billing period? 31. That's it. So you take 192,110 divided by 31. What is our average daily balance? 6,197.56. And how many cents? 10 cents. Okay. There it is. And that is the end of part A. Oh, this. Yeah. Oh, this sucks. Yeah. <laughs> All right. No problem. Okay. So there it is. You become an accountant. No. Yeah, they make good money. Um, so there it is. Six thousand one hundred ninety-seven. Now, that's it. That's part A. That's how you do part A. It's about five steps. Then part B. These the remaining steps are pretty easy. Find the interest to be paid on April first. Okay. So. The average daily balance for this account, if you average it out, is $6,197 based on the purchases and based on what was rolled over from previous months, okay? Now we need to find out how much this credit card company is gonna charge us in interest, okay? Because obviously this is not for free. So to figure that out, you use a simple interest formula, very easy. So um, something that you wanna pay attention to is in your problem, they are going to tell you what the interest rate is. In this problem, it's 1.5%, okay? So the interest rate is 1.5% for this problem, and so that's why you see 1.5 here. Now, to find your interest, you're gonna use your simple interest formula, P I equals P R T. So what it is, your P is your 6,197, times your interest rate, 0 0.015, and your T is always gonna be one. Always one. So for our credit card problems, the T is always one. Does that make sense, guys? Okay, and so what is that amount for this problem? Oh, sorry, go ahead. Okay, there it is. Um, what if it didn't have the interest? What do you mean, say that again? Like if it didn't have the interest rate on there. It should be on there. Look look back at your problem. I'm looking. Is it not there? It says find the interest to be paid on April 1st, the next billing day. Go back to the very top of the problem. Hold on. The very top of the problem? Doesn't have it in there? Just kidding, it's there. Okay. Sorry. Good. So the P is the answer to A, correct or no? The P is the answer. Yes, your your yes, your average daily balance of six thousand one hundred ninety-seven ten cents. That's your answer for A. And what we just did now is answered B, calculating the amount of interest that we have to pay for that month. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. All right. So good. Let's move on. We're going to now move on to. So the interest to be paid is ninety-two dollars and ninety-six cents. Find the balance due on April 1st. How do we figure out balance due? Well, it's what? 
It's your total balance at the end of the month, right? Where did this 6,380 come from? That was what? It was the very last amount right here. Now, a lot of times students make a mistake. They take the average daily balance and they add the interest to that. That's not right, is it? Because at the end of the month, you owed $6,380, right? Because you started the month at 62.30, you paid back some, you spent some, you spent some, you spent some. This is how much you owed at the end of the month. What's the 6,197? That's just the average daily balance. That's used to calculate how much interest. So if we wanna find out how much we owe on in April, we take our amount that we finished the month of March on, 6,380, and add our interest to that. Does that make sense? Be careful, you don't use your average daily balance as the amount added to your interest. What is that? 6,472. Okay, there it is, perfect. And we're still not done. One more step. This is, that's why I said seven questions, but there's a lot to it. Now let's look at this last step. This last step says this credit card requires a $10 minimum monthly payment. You've heard about that before. You can pay the minimum or a $10 minimum. Uh, if the balance due at the end of the period is less than $360. Well, can we pay just a minimum of $10? No, because our balance is huge. It's over $6,000. We can't pay the $10 minimum because our balance is greater than $360. Okay, well, when, what are we going to pay? If that's the case, if that's not the case, we can't do that, the minimum monthly payment is one thirty-sixth of the balance due. In other words, 6,472 divided by what? 36. Yes. $179.80. $179.80. That's how much you need to pay as your minimum payment. Should you do that? No, you should pay more. You should pay more, if not try to pay it all off. Okay? So, is the balance due less than $360? No. Therefore, $6,472 times 1 over 36. Round to the nearest dollar, 180. And there it is. That's how much your minimum payment is. Okay, very, very big problem. That's why a lot of students skip it. Don't recommend it, but I understand. Okay, so um, let's move on. And I just wanna, I wanna talk about every problem, but I'm not gonna do every problem, okay? Um, so let's talk about this one. We are not, that, there's only one problem with that in our, in our homework. So suppose that you borrow $10,000 for four years at 6% toward the purchase of the car, finding monthly payments and the total interest on the loan. Is this anything new? No. no. It's this right here, isn't it? And then this as well, right? Didn't we just do that? So I'm not gonna do that problem. And we don't define the C on that, correct? We just gotta do the PMT? You have to find the PMT, and then you'll need to find the interest, right? But we don't have to find the C, is what I'm saying. C, are you talking about? The points, Points, sorry. points. Oh, part C, gotcha. No, nope. points only applies to your mortgage if it even asks for it in the problem. Okay. And so far, the only one that does is problem one. Okay. But we had to kind of hit it so you knew. All right, everybody got that? Okay, number six. Suppose that you decide to borrow $17,000 for a new car. You can select one of the following loans each requiring regular monthly payments. A three-year loan at 5.1% or a five-year loan at 5.8%. Hold on. Did we do a problem like this as well? Yes. yes. This is the problem where you have two options, right? So you have, you're borrowing 17,000. You're gonna make monthly payments, right? Three years at 5% or five years at 5.8%. Which one do you choose? Which one's better? We did one like that, okay? So I'm not gonna do that, but I am going to do problem seven. This one is very important, okay? This one's actually a total pain, but um, we do need to do it so that you're prepared. Um, what time is it? Somebody tell me the time. 9.06. Okay, perfect. Still recording? Yep. All right, wonderful. Um, so, the cost of a home is financed with $190,000, 30-year fixed rate mortgage at 5%. Do we have a down payment here? No, because it's Finance, we've already taken out the down payment. Does that make sense, guys? 
The amount financed means that you've already finished your down payment, all that. The amount financed is your mortgage amount. Okay? Amount financed is your mortgage amount. So, first we need to do find the monthly payment and the total interest. How about we go do that real quick, shall we? Okay? Um, and you know what I need to do? I want to save some time, okay? I want to save some time. Um, so, because I need to show you this thing, an amortization schedule. So what I'm gonna do, okay, is I'm going to right here just set up, oh, uh, let me put it right here actually. PMT, I'm gonna do the setup, is what? 190,000, everybody agree? And I'm gonna, I'm gonna go to a calculator that's gonna go ahead and just calculate it for me to save time, because we know how to do it. 190,000, what's our interest rate? 5%. We're making monthly payments on it, divided by one minus, what? One plus, 0 0.05 divided by 12 to the negative N, which is 12, T, which is 30. And there's your setup, everybody agree? Okay, now, I'm going to cheat a little bit, okay? Um, because I wanna save some time and I need to show you an amortization schedule, okay? So, amortizationcalc.com. Surprise, surprise, look what we have here, a little calculator for us. What's the loan amount? Uh, 190,000. How many years, 30? What's the interest rate? Five. Zip code doesn't matter, does it? Who cares? There it is, done. There's our monthly payment. Okay, so, yeah, I know, right? But you value it because you know you have the knowledge behind it, right? So, there's your answer. Look at what it just popped out. Your monthly payment is 1,020, okay? The total interest you pay is $177,000 and 177,186. The total amount you paid was 367, right? Because if you subtract this, subtract 190,000 from this, isn't that it, right? You paid this. If you take this 1,020, multiply it by 12, multiply it by 30, you get 367,186. Subtract your original loan amount from it, 190,000, and that's how much interest you paid. And you'll pay it off in 2047. Where did you have that? amortization-calc.com. You can find it anywhere. Okay, so that's all I wanted to say for that. For now, we need to do an amortization schedule, okay? What is an amortization schedule? Let's talk about it, okay? <laughs> this, you, you, you want to be good with this stuff. You do not want to be bad. It's very, very important that you know how to use it. So I'm gonna show you now. Um, and we're gonna do an amortization schedule together, okay? I'm gonna just kind of, I want a blank screen. This is not the greatest, but um, how do I get a white background? Does anybody know? Just Google. White background. Done. <laughs> All right, so still recording? Yeah. yeah. Okay, perfect. So what is an amortization schedule? This is part B. This is part B. Now if you do the help me solve this, it's gonna walk you through it. Um, and it's a very, very important piece to know how to calculate. So there's, it's a table that you create and it's gonna show you how to pay off your loan every step of the way how your loan gets paid off, okay? So, um, first column is gonna be your payment, okay? Um, the next one is going to be your uh, amount, or we'll just call it the payment, okay? And then the next thing is going to be um, your interest. Next one is going to be your balance reduction. And then the last one is gonna be your principal. Okay? All right. 
All right. When you take out your loan, let me not, not do a zero here. When you take out a loan at day zero, in this problem, we owe $190,000. Everybody agree? Day zero, we owe $190,000. Our goal is to do what? Pay it off, right? Our very first payment, how much was that payment amount? Do you guys remember? What was it? 1,000 something, seven something. It was 1,020, okay? So our payment amount was 1,020. We're just gonna use 1,020 here because it's an approximation, okay? All right, now, our payment was 1,020. Some of that went to interest. How do we figure out how much went to interest? Okay, very simple. You take your previous principal, okay, and you multiply it by, um, oh, hold on, we'll do this, times your R over N, okay? So I want somebody to do 0.05 divided by 12. And I'll explain this in a moment. 0 0.05 divided by 12. 0.00416666. Perfect. Take that amount and multiply it by 190,000. Tell me what that is. 791.666672. Okay, so we'll say 791.67. Sound good? Okay. Of your 1,020 that you're paying towards in paying in your every monthly payment, your first payment, that's how much of that goes towards interest. Okay, so how do you figure it out again? You take your principal, you multiply it by your R over N for your problem. 0 0.05 divided by 12 times that. That's how we got that number, and it's right here. What is your balance reduction? It's the difference between these two. It's your payment minus your interest. So somebody tell me what 1,020 minus 791.67 is. 228.33. Okay. That's how much goes towards paying off the actual amount you owe in your first payment of 360 payments. Yeah, the first 10 years, all you're doing is paying it. Correct. Mostly. Exactly. Now, how much principal is left? It's your previous principal minus your balance reduction. So how much do we owe now? 190,000 minus 228.33. Somebody tell me what's here. 187 something. Uh, 189. Oh, sorry. No? Oh yeah, yeah, sorry. I was thinking 2,000. Yeah. We owe a lot more than that. 189 what? Seven. 771 and 67. Okay, perfect. Let's do another two rows and then we'll be done for the day. Okay, let's do this. Hang in there, we're almost done. Payment number two. We still pay 1,020 every month. This never changes. Does that make sense, everybody? You always pay the same amount. It's just that some, more of it or less of it goes towards interest. How do we figure out what goes here? It's not this. It's now this times your 0 0.05 divided by 12. So this goes down as this goes up, and this goes down to zero. Does that make sense, everybody? Somebody tell me what this is. It should be a little bit less. 790 and 73 cents. Yay, one less dollar in interest. <laughs> now, tell me how much we have as a balance reduction. It should be 229 something. 229.28. Good. A little bit more going towards paying off our amount. Somebody tell me how much we have left to pay off. 189 something. 189.5. 40. No. 5. No. 4 or something, I think. Yeah. Okay. Uh, 189.5. Okay, let's do one more row and then we'll be done. That way you're, you've got enough practice. So after two payments on your home, you owe $189,500. Payment number three, do we pay the same amount? Yes. Always. Should this interest be going down or up? Down. Down. Somebody tell me what this is now. 
Don't use this one, right? Don't use this one. We use which one? The most recent one from the previous one. So you need to take that and multiply it by your R over N. What is that? 780. Oh. Now go ahead. 789 and 786. Perfect. One less dollar in interest. Okay, what's our balance reduction? The difference between these two? 230, maybe. Yeah, 230 and 24. Okay, and so what is our remaining balance, our, pre, our principal now? 189, 312, and, and 15, cents. 15 cents. Okay, now hold on a moment. This amortization schedule does all of that for you. Okay, it does all of that for you. So that's all I had to say. There it is. Eight, six, seven, eight, seven problems, a lot of pain.